Okay, so next we need to actually get this to do something a bit more exciting. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some more um, listeners in there, which tell us um, how to uh, interact with that ball. What I want to do it to do is to move around the screen after the mouse. Um, if the mouse button is clicked down, if the mouse button isn't clicked down, then it doesn't move after the mouse. Um, you can sort of see how that would start to lead to um, an idea of a game. Now, the event listeners only fire when uh, the action is clicked, so when I put the mouse down, it's only going to run once. So we need a way of knowing what state the, uh, the mouse button is in. So at the top I'm going to put is mouse down. Brilliant. False. By default, the mouse isn't down. Okay, so in the initialization, we want to do effectively one of these things again, but we want to do it for the mouse. We want to say, yeah, is the mouse being clicked? If it is, then I want that mouse down variable to be true. The mouse is down, and when the mouse is released, I want it to be switched back to false again. So to do that, Again, we're going to say stage dot add event listener, and this time it's going to be a mouse event. And that's going to be mouse up. And we're going to call a function called mouse up. And an event listener. Mouse event. Mouse down, and that's going to call mouse down. Okay, so basically, all we've done here is we've set up um, an event listener to say call these functions when the mouse is clicked down or up, and that we're going to make set a variable which is going to tell us what the state of the mouse is at the moment. So I'm going to put another function in called mouse up. And another function called mouse down. And of course we want that to be setting this variable. So when the mouse is up, the mouse can't be down, and when the mouse is down, it must be true because the mouse has been pressed down. Okay, so that's going to tell us if we've got the mouse clicked down or not, which is very useful, especially if you're going to be firing weaponry or that sort of thing. It's quite handy to know. So in here, we're going to then say, well, is the mouse down? And if it is, I want you to do something. Now, down here, we've got something called the output window, and this output window lets us write things out just to check things are working the way we want them to be. And you access that by saying trace mouse is down. What we'll see in that output window is this being said over and over again. Mouse is down. Now, setting these things up properly is annoying. Um, but it is really very powerful because actually what it passes in here is lots of information about what happened when this button was clicked, you know, what was happening. It gives you a lot of information about, you know, where it was positioned and, uh, you know, relative position to things and colors and, you know, was an alt key pressed at the same time. So if you're pressing alt and mouse down, yeah, that's quite useful. We're not going to use that much today. But what we've seen is that we can trap the mouse being pressed, which is very, very powerful for writing games. But we want the object to do something now. That is, after all, the points. So if the mouse is up, we want the ball object to be red. And if the mouse is down, I want it to be green.
There we go. All very interesting again. Now then, in here actually we want to do it so that the ball actually moves towards the mouse as we're actually um, doing something. Okay, so actually what I want to do is slowly move the mouse, the ball to the mouse. Because um, actually, if I show you um, what would happen if we did it otherwise, it doesn't look very good. So if I said, I want the ball object while the mouse is down to equal the position of the mouse. Man, that you know, it's not. It does what it's supposed to do, but it actually doesn't look great because it's just literally where the mouse is. And I let go and it moves away. And, yeah, that's not great. You want it to be a bit smoother than that. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to try and work out the difference between where the mouse is and the ball. I'm going to slowly move the ball towards the mouse while the mouse button is down. So, we're going to create two variables. One is the, dis the difference between the X and Y positions of the ball to the mouse. Let's get the X position of the mouse, and we take away the ball objects position. Let me say the same for the y axis. Okay, so now what we're actually doing is we're getting a difference between where the mouse is and where the ball is. And that's quite useful. And then we want to move the ball ever so slowly towards the mouse. Now a lot of games and user interfaces these days use like an elastic property. So um, it moves quickly to start off with towards where the mouse is, and then it slows down as it gets towards it. And this is done by really simple division. So we say ball object x position is moved by x amount. So just to explain what that means is we're taking the current position of the ball and then we're finding out the difference between the ball and the mouse and then we want to move the ball to the mouse by a tenth of that that uh, distance what will happen is actually if the mouse was static and not moving actually that that difference will be smaller and smaller and smaller and it would slow down as you get towards it so if I run that you see the ball slowly moves quicker first, but then slow as it moves towards it. So what we've actually created here is actually our very first very simple uh, introduction into starting to write a flash game.